Ancient Egypt, civilization in northeastern Africa that dates from the 4th millennium BCE. Its many achievements preserved in its art and monuments hold a fascination that continues to grow as archaeological finds expose its secrets. Ancient Egypt can be thought of as an oasis in the desert of northeastern Africa, dependent on the annual inundation of the Nile River to support its agricultural population. The country's chief wealth came from the fertile floodplain of the Nile Valley, where the river flows between bands of limestone hills and the Nile Delta, in which it fans into several branches north of present-day Cairo. Between the floodplain and the hills is a variable band of low desert that supported a certain amount of game. The Nile was Egypt's sole transportation artery. Egyptians believed that a person needed to live in harmony with the cosmic order, called Mat. After a person died, they were judged by Osiris, the Egyptian god of the dead. A person's heart was weighed against a feather. If one's heart was lighter than the feather, the soul, or universal spirit one received at birth, called Ka, would pass on to an afterlife in the field of reeds. If one's heart was too heavy, they'd be devoured by Amet, a crocodile-shaped goddess. Mummification started by accident. The arid Egyptian environment is very conducive to mummification. The first Egyptian mummies were bodies probably dried out in graves, dug in the sand through natural process. The resulting well-preserved bodies were an inspiring if not direct sign from the gods that this is how the dead should be treated. As society developed, the Egyptians began to place the bodies of their rulers within sarcophagi in tombs. However, Bodies do not preserve as well in tombs as they did in dry desert sands. It is at this point that embalmers began to develop the techniques they needed to mummify the dead. By about 2600 BCE, Egyptians probably started to embalm the dead on purpose. This started with royalty. This practice continued for over two millennia. The exact details of how Egyptian embalmers mummified the dead is a trade secret that is still being pieced together by archaeologists. There are no existing Egyptian technical manuals on the subject, but the ancient Greeks wrote about it. The first account is by Herodotus, who wrote about embalmers in 430 BCE in his histories. Embalmers first needed to remove the internal organs, which easily decayed. The process began by taking the body to a temporary building. The embalmers took an iron hook, inserted it up the cadaver's nostril, and penetrated the brain cavity. A good embalmer tried very hard not to break the body's nose, though sometimes it was unavoidable. Once done, the hook was used to swirl around the gray matter and extract it. The brain bits were discarded, since the Egyptians thought the brain useless. To the Egyptians, the heart was the source of a person's individuality. Their intelligence, wisdom, and personality were all in the heart, not in the head. A scribe marked where to cut an opening on the corpse's side. Cutters or slitters did this work with an obsidian knife. Then reaching through the opening, the lungs, liver, intestines, and all other organs except the kidneys and the heart were removed. These cutters were actually not embalmers, since the work they did was considered desecration. They were of a much lower status, and after they finished their work, they fled the scene, having objects and curses hurled at them as a matter of ceremony. The embalmers then began the preservation process. They removed the remaining organs and cleared out the body cavity. They washed the body out with substances, including palm wine. Then, in order to counter any odor from putrefaction, they applied liberal amounts of aromatics such as myrrh and cinnamon. Meanwhile, organs that had been removed were washed with palm wine and placed into canopic jars for preservation. When all was done, the heart was placed back inside the body. The dead needed their hearts for when Osiris judged them. In later years, the heart was replaced with a scarab, symbolizing the god Osiris's rebirth. The kidneys were most likely left inside the body, being considered unimportant. The mummy-to-be was removed to a house of beauty. To dry the corpse, the embalmers used natron, a form of naturally occurring salt that the Egyptians harvested from lake beds. Embalmers buried the body with natron, as well as inserting packets of it inside the body cavity. The corpse sat idly for 40 days. When the time was up, the embalmers took the body, washed it, and removed the packets. The resulting body was dried out, but otherwise recognizable. 
To improve its appearance, in some instances, the embalmers filled the inside with rags or straw to puff out sunken areas. They even added false eyes, sometimes using onions. Their work impressed the deceased kin. The Greek historian Diodorus Sicilius remarked, Every member of the body having been so preserved intact that even the hair on the eyelids and brows remains. The entire appearance of the body is unchanged and the cast of its shape is recognizable. The embalmers then entered the last stage of the work, spending some 30 days dressing the body. They applied sticky resin to the body and wrapped it with hundreds of yards of linen bandages. At points they stopped either to insert a protective amulet or to recite a chant. Then after over two months of work, the mummy was complete. All that was left was the opening of the mouth ceremony, in which the mummy was placed into a standing position and symbolically reanimated for the afterlife.